Romans, ready for duty. Ready for orders. Quick march. Your orders. Okay. So here we go. We've got some fire going on. We've got some fire. Oh, fire burn, baby. Brave Romans. You do like fire. The Legion of Fire. That's what I should have called them. The Legion of Fire. And there you go. There you go. This is the AI thing. I don't know if this is a bug or what, but they just come out, charge you, and then they just run away again. Turn their backs to you, and then you just pepper them with arrows. That what's happening here. Oh, 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 oh. There's a mob running away. Mobs. Romans, ready for duty. Stop now. We're getting peppered, actually, aren't we? Somebody's firing at us. We better just move our troops in. This is another problem that happens not just here but sort of even in larger battles where they seem to just bunch up in a, a big big mosh pit <laughs> as has been described by Angry Joe. The battle is turning in our favour. Right, what's happening here? General, can we do anything? Ah. I don't really want them firing into the melee here. I'll take more fire away for now. We don't have any abilities at the moment with this general, so... Uh, sort of... Sort of get involved, I suppose. Right. Missiles ready and waiting. I think we softened these guys up Jupiter long enough. Let's get in the, uh, the back of these guys and, and, and finish this. Hello, folks. What's happening down here? A bit more of a, a, bit more of a uh, skirmish. Yours to command. Break the line and march. Come on, push in. Bunch up. That's the way to do it. Bunch up and cause a mess. Right, here we go. Swingers shouldn't really be an issue here. Whee! And we're in. Gonna make short work of these guys. And off they go. And another set of swingers there. These guys are shattered and running. Which leaves... Oh, everybody's gone. So, with our general, we could end the battle, but we're going to continue and run them down. The more people we run down, the more slaves we can get, potentially, so uh, run them down. Our enemy have lost a victory point. Okay, these guys are going to run up, up there. We'll leave those and we'll just sort of capture, capture these guys. Where's my general? The enemy fort will soon be ours. This is another thing that's a little bit of a problem, is that they don't run down troops very effectively. Um, as you can see, the horses swarm these guys and they're still running away. They're doing a rather fancy dance with them by the looks of it. They do eventually kill them, but it just takes them uh, a little bit longer than they should. Which, when you want to finish the battle, <laughs> can be a little annoying, but for now we'll just chase them down and see what happens. Those guys are already in the hills, almost out of the battle map. Like one guy left. No, two guys left? Three guys? Four. There's four of them. <laughs> Look, what are you doing? Kill the guy, will you? Put him out of his misery. There we go. Two more, come on. <laughs> it's like Benny Hill this. Got him. Right, where's the other one? Turn around and get him. Oh, too fast. There we go. That should be us done. We've 
got one unit of depleted Hastati here. Pretty heavily, de uh, heavily depleted. Right, and sometimes it just takes a little bit longer than necessary to end the battle. Like now there's no other units of theirs on the screen. It will end in about five seconds, but it just takes a little bit longer than it should. All of these things do add up. His minor irks. There we go. Okay, I did say that I was going to save replays of, of pivotal battles where lots of action happens and, and sort of do a, a highlights reel at the end of the battle. As you can appreciate, this rather small skirmish. Barely worth it. So, uh, suffering from attrition, as well as a few losses, ultimately, the land is ours. So we can loot, we can raise, we can occupy. Considering we're trying to, you know, we're trying to unify the province, I don't think looting it is going to be uh, quite what we what we're after right now. So we're going to occupy. The province will take a little bit of a hit to public order. You have further orders. There we go. So uh, as, as we saw before, we had Rome, we had Neapolis. Now, Velathri is part of the same province as these, and therefore the whole province as a whole suffers from the negative public order effect. So the public order was won, and the next turn it will plummet down to minus 26 um, as a result of the fact that we've occupied a new settlement. That's fine. Things will even itself out once we uh, capture the whole province, issue an edict, and uh, let them stabilise. So for now, we're going to keep him here. At your command. He's going to replenish some of his troops. And then he's going to move on to the next port of call, which will be Arminium. But for now, his work is done. Legio Sanguine. His first victory. Five stairs of service, one battle, one victory. Wasn't, it's, uh, wasn't a stern test, if I am honest, but uh, a victory is a victory. So we now have earned a level up with our general. And we can take a look at his stats and his traits. He uh, is a he, this man enjoys the sight of blood, particularly enemy blood. That's one of his traits. Gives us five uh, that five yeah five percent morale for all enemy units. Or minus five is that minus five percent morale for all enemy units? And minus 5% to number of battle captives, so that's he likes the sight of blood. So in lieu of that fact, he's the, he's a type of general, in my opinion, that would want to get involved in the fight. And therefore, zeal, which is personal prow prowess, is, is what we're going to focus on with this guy, our, our faction leader. So uh, we're going to focus on warrior. We're going to make him the type of general that doesn't mind getting his hands dirty in battle. And then when we fight the battle on the battle map, we'll try and get him involved in as many skirmishes as we can. A bit risky, but that's his personal style. So uh, give him extra zeal. And then we go back into him, the zeal is up to four. Orders. So there we go, that's, a, uh, that's that situation sorted. So as far as I'm concerned, I don't think there's much else for me to do this turn. We've moved the units, we've moved the uh, agents and ships, we have the building work completed. Just take a quick peek, making sure that there's no obvious threats coming our way. There is this ship here. This is the uh, Epirus. So uh, they haven't done much thus far. They've, I think they were sat there before, so we don't have to overly be concerned about those, I don't think. Okay, so turn two is complete. Onwards to the next turn. As you can see, the more factions that you uncover, the more you view what they're doing, and it does slow things down slightly. But it's, it's, it's bearable. It's bearable. I'm sure people have far, far longer times than that for their end turns. So we've completed technology. If we go to the event messages, Athens have declared war on Epirus. The RDA have declared war on Epirus. What have Epirus done to people? If you go to the... Diplomacy, you'll see that Epirus are at war with a fair few people now. And uh, they're more than likely going to get to 
mashed up, shall we say, <laughs> and wiped off the face of the earth. Um, if we go to... Oh, it's these here. This is like a, t a strategic overview, which I haven't yet looked at. If you click on this here, you go into a strategic overview of the situation. You can see a variety of things. For instance, we can see faction ownership. And now this is Epirus. They appear to have two lands. Whether that's they have two lands or whether that's just only two of their lands that we can actually see, I'm not quite sure. But I think they do only have these two. So they're in danger. They're sort of beset from both sides. This is a diplomatic overview. You can see who we are and we can see who our enemies are in red. This is the um, Etruscan League and we can see who we're neutral with and who we're allied with as well at a quick glance. We have the public order situation so we can see that in Magna Graecia down here everything seems to be fine, it's in the green so they're increasing whereas up here in Italia it's in the red. And the reason why it's in the red is because we've just captured a new settlement so we're getting a little bit of instability and sort of negative bonuses there. And this is the wealth, which I don't really pay attention to, to be fair. And finally, the region growth. This tells you how much your, your, your population is growing, and green is good. That's the, that's the overview screen. Uh, so that's it. I don't think there's anything else for us to do. Oh, there is a new turn. What am I saying? Right, so shift and arrow key to move quicker, I think. Yep, shift and arrow key moves a bit quicker. So our ship's now yes. ready to scout out new lands. All hands to the oars. Space bar to speed up the movement speed. We still have a good wind. As in previous games. Waiting for a new course. And we keep we on uncovering keep on uncovering new factions. So this ship here is gonna sail all the way round the southern coast of France, round the southern coast of Spain, up towards Britannia. And this as I say, this ship is going down this way. So where are we? Your orders. There we go, we're just going to take them here. Uh, have we bumped into a ship here? We've bumped into some ships there. Sorry about that. Don't mind me. Don't want another situation like in Medieval 2 where I accidentally waged war on somebody. <laughs> when I didn't mean to, causing years Waiting of bloodshed. So uh, we're just going to go up here and round. So now that we've moved our ships and we've uncovered a few new factions, it makes sense to head to the diplomacy screen and see if we can change anything. Now, if I have got any uh, negative replies from people, I'm not going to try this every single time. I'll wait a few turns and then try again. So we've tried all of these to no gain. Uh, the RDI, I'm going to try them again. Just because they're at war with Epirus now, their, their situation has slightly changed. Would they welcome more trade to fund their war, possibly? Welcome. I throw open the doors to you. There you go. Your proposal has merit for my people, and I am sure the gods favour agreeable men. So, uh, they're at war with Epirus, and as I suspected, they're going to need to fund that war, so extra trade wouldn't be a bad thing for them. So there we go. So we got some extra trade from them. Who else is at war with Epirus? Was it Athens? Yeah. I think they were already at war with Epirus before, but we'll try Athens again. Greetings, my friend. You have my... No, not interested. Okay, so that's Athens. Epirus obviously are at war with multiple people. <laughs> they don't like us, so they're not going... Actually, in fact, they're hostile with us now. Before they were unfriendly, now they're hostile. Uh... Ah, because we've just got a treaty with the RDA. They're at war with the RDA, we've gone into trade with the RDA, and therefore that makes Epirus like us even less. I couldn't give a flying monkeys, really. Uh, RDA, yep, Sesatani, they are new. They are, where are they? They're over here in sort of northern Spain. Greetings, so, friend. No. We will speak. Okay, now go. Uh, Ligeri we've tried before. We'll leave those for now. Massilia, Volke, they can't trade. They're up there. And Syracuse is already trading. So we've got, we've got an extra trade partner. So that's, that's good. That's fine. And um, if we go to trade again, we can take a quick peek and see that we're now trading 330. So uh, slowly but surely, the trade values are going up, which is nice to see. Technology, we're going to go into uh, Manipula Organization, so that we can build this Manipula Barracks. Uh, objectives, that's fine. Still working on those. Okay, 
our spy is she, is she still wounded? She is still wounded. I could really do with her sort of scouting around here and seeing what lies in wait for us at aluminium. Uh, but she's uh, she's otherwise engaged, which is a shame. But never mind. Right. At your command. Levers are pretty crap. To be perfectly blunt with you, they. Excuse me, my phone's going off again. Uh, pretty crap. So I'm going to replace them with two more units of belly test and another unit of a starter. So if we disband those troops now, excuse me, uh, disband. No, wrong unit. Disband. 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 There we go, and we go to the uh, uh, recruitment. Uh, two more. Rome uh, needs good fighters. And one of them. So, slightly strengthening our troop force here. Extra unit of uh, Velites. A couple of units of Velites. Extra unit of Astarte. These are still replenishing. So, uh, need your sanguine preparing themselves for round two with the Etruscan League. So, that's just an extra turn to, for that to, for, to take effect. So, we go down and finish off with the building work, as is customary. Poor old uh, Scipio down here, bored out of Ready his skull, thinking, what the hell am I doing here? Just sat overseeing a settlement. I want to be at war, gaining uh, gravitas. Well, considering he's a leader of an enemy, enemy house, rival faction, if you will, I think leaving him to rot is a good idea. <laughs> uh, it, it seems kind of a strange setup. You know, I'm directly controlling my opposition. So if I take him into battle and get him a lot of gravitas, it seems almost like it's working against us, which almost promotes you neglecting the enemy, or the enemy, you know what I mean, the rival houses. So it's a real weird system. But, but as I say, <laughs> I'm sure there's more to it than that. So, uh, he's sat there rotting away, really, for now. Of course, if we decide to start going down this way, or start going down to Carthage, he will be the first general that we call. So, uh, building work then. We've got 1,600 to spend. As we can see here, we're still waiting for the temple. Public order is sort of stagnant here for now. We could expand the city and build something else to promote public order. Or we could just wait until that's built and, and take it from there. I think we'll do that. We're in no urgency to get things sorted here. And as for here, we have the, we have the villa. Now we'll upgrade it to the farm and uh, that should do us nicely. For our food production which is now up to nine and of course we could upgrade this temple as well in due course so that's the building work i'm happy with that happy with that happy with the movements ships have been and gone everything is hunky dory so once more we shall end the turn epirus epirus where art thou, Epirus? Oh, somebody's attacking Ariminium before we did. That's not good. That is my settlement. That is not yours. <laughs>